and welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a big picture look at the concept of automation locally at the 40 gates and also playbooks with automation up at the 40 analyzer. So let's begin with the idea in general regarding automation. Now, why in the world would we ever need to automate anything? I mean, let's just do it all manually, step by step. I remember back in the 80s, <laughs> back when I first was getting into networking and IT, I remember working with batch files and with basic scripting so we could accomplish a whole bunch of work with just a few commands. It was fantastic. So whenever we can leverage automation and programming to go ahead and save time and be more efficient and consistent, it's a wise idea to do so. So let's take a look at automation on the FortiGate's themselves. On the individual 40 gates, there's a section for fabric, and then there's a subsection for automation. And those automation features exist whether it's part of a security fabric or not. And in the automation section, we can set up if-then statements. If this happens, then do that. And they refer to the if as a trigger. And then for the then portion of this equation, it's referred to as an action. And so effectively, we're linking a trigger to an action. And the linking of that trigger and the action on the local 40 gates is referred to as an automation stitch. And here's an example of an automation stitch on a local firewall. We could say, for example, if there's a failed login by admin, then go ahead and send a notification, maybe a syslog message or an email message or 40 Explorer message to make someone aware that that occurred. So the failed login would be the trigger and then the action would be whatever action we associated with that. And that's again local here at the 40 gate. Now we also have automation that we can implement over here at the 40 analyzer. So in a previous set of videos, we created incidents based on events that occurred. So the logging information came into the 40 analyzer. The 40 analyzer indexed that information and put it in the SQL database. So it's now part of the analytics logs. And then we had event handlers looking at that logging information and then creating from that an event. And then what we did is we took that event and we manually created an incident. And then working with that incident, we could add notes, we could assign administrators to it, we could track it, we could audit it until it was finally remediated or resolved. And it seems to me like if we're going to manually create the incident based on some IPS alert or something else that comes in, if we had some automation, we could just tell the 40 analyzer, hey, listen, if there's a event that happens and it hasn't been mitigated, go ahead and automatically, for example, create an incident and automatically add information to that incident based on all the logs and information that you have. That'll save us a lot of time. And that's a perfect example of what we can do with automation on the 40 analyzer, which is referred to as playbooks which once again is more like an if then statement. So for example, if this type of event occurs, go ahead and automatically create an incident based on a playbook rather than just wait for an admin to do it manually. And so the triggers for these playbooks could be a specific event that happens or a playbook could be triggered manually by the admin. And either way, the goal is pretty much the same. And that is to have automation do some of the heavy lifting for us so we don't have to manually do it all step by step by step. And then the other piece regarding automation I'd like to chat about in this set of videos is linking these together. <laughs> For example, let's imagine that something happens here at the 40 analyzer. Wouldn't it be great if we could trigger some of the automation over here at the firewall? So if we had an attacker who was coming in through our network or trying to come in through our network, we could have a playbook here in 40 analyzer that integrates with the automation here on the firewalls to implement, for example, a block or to quarantine a device so that the firewall that is trying to get through absolutely won't let through. So with this overview in place, what I'd like to do in the next videos is first of all, take a look at the local automation and demonstrate that here on the 40 gates, and then take a look at playbooks over on the 40 analyzer. And then number three, integrate both of them together with the playbooks interacting directly back with the local 40 gates. So our journey continues in the very next video. I'll see you there in just a moment. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.